ETL Computer 2. Today, we're going to take a look at our register circuits as well as our memory circuits. And uh, we're going to jump right into this today. Um, okay, so we're looking at um, pretty much all our major register set, our A register, B register, our X register, C instruction register, and our stack pointer. Uh, and these are all implemented with the 74574, which is an 8-bit uh, register. And um, they have, uh, these are tri-state uh, tri uh, chips. And we have our uh, output enable, uh, which is an active low. And we also have our clock, which will um, load the register with whatever is presented at its uh, at it as its input on the day on the data lines, and uh, I'm going to just introduce something uh, from digital that we haven't really uh, mentioned before, and that's the notion of uh, tunnels, right? So we can see all these little triangles that are all attached to all of our ICs, and you may have noticed them before. Um, they are tunnels. So what that is, is it gives us a way to wire items up uh, without actually drawing wires. So this is the L0 tunnel. So anything that's connected to L0, 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 they're L0, they're all connected. They're all effectively connected with a wire. Okay, so we... Um, so we have our, our, our register ICs, we have all the inputs and then all the outputs. So uh, this is our A register. Um, we have the input for the A register, D0 through D7 is connected to our uh, data bus. The output for the A register uh, is connected to our L bus, if you remember back to our architecture design, which means that's the left input for the ALU, same thing for the B register. Inputs are the data bus and the output signals are to the left bus. Uh, now X register is a little bit different. The input is on the data bus, but the output for the X register is on our, uh, right, our right bus, right? Because that's the only register that's connected on the right side of the ALU. We have our C register again, data bus input, left bus output, instruction register, data bus input. Uh, and this is just the instruction bus, if you want to call it that. But this is just uh, hard coded to the control unit. And then our stack pointer uh, input is the data bus. And our output, again, is the left bus. So that's all of our, uh, that's our register set. So um, now the clock line controls the loading of the register. So each of these has um, a little bit of a logic circuit to control the load. So for the A register, we can see that uh, that is the our, our A in signal plus the update clock. We'll, we'll clock in we'll clock in the A register. B register, same thing, B signal and our update clock will we'll clock in the B register. The X register is our X in signal plus the P clock. So if you remember back in our discussion of the of our clock circuit, we had uh, we had the the, the P the, the 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 P clock, the U clock, and the T clock. And we you can watch that video again if you need an update. But uh, the X register uses the P clock. C register, same thing, the C in and the update clock, the instruction register, stack, uh, the stack in and the update clock and our stack pointer is, um, oops, excuse me, stack pointer is uh, the stack in and the update clock. Okay, so that is our register set. And in effect, we're also kind of looking at the, at the bus wiring when we look at this because uh, I said each of these, uh, these are tunnels and they're effectively constructing, um, constructing our, our bus. Okay, so let's come down here now and we will look at 
our uh, RAM circuitry. Okay, so our our, our initial our initial release of uh, TTL Computer Two, our our onboard memory is going to consist of our uh, 8K ROM and, and a 32K uh, static RAM. And uh, we see here again uh, the heavy use of our uh, tunnels. Right, we have we have tunnels from A1 all the way through uh, A15 for our address lines, again, effectively creating our address bus. We have um, uh, our data bus D0 through D8 as the, uh, you know, the input and the output for our RAM. Uh, now we also have our, our chip enabled uh, signal for our ROM. And we have a little bit of a, a, of a of decode logic here, which will, as to when this uh, ROM will be uh, enabled, and this is a negative active low. So uh, basically the rule is if, if A15 is low and A13 is low, then our chip enable will be low, which means that our ROM will be, will be active. And um, so let's hold off talking about that a little bit further, right? And this is our, an EEPROM, so the right enable negative active we always we just tie that to to high because this is only a, a read only device for us okay so then we jump over here to our our 32k rom and we have much the same setup right we have uh a a0 through a a uh, 14 for our address lines and those are all connected to the uh, the address line tunnels uh, the input and the output is connected to our data bus, right? D0 through D8. And then uh, much the same as with the ROM, we have our negative chip enable uh, signal and we have some small decode logic here. And the decode logic for our, um, for our RAM is a little bit uh, easier than our ROM. It's basically if, if A5, if the, a15 is high, then our chip is enabled, right? So that means that this trip, this chip will be addressed at OX8000, will be the top 32, uh, 32K bytes of our memory address space. Okay, and then also on this little circuit, we also um, generate our, our active low write signal, okay? And that is, uh, basically the uh, RAM in signal plus the P clock signal, right? Will give us our, um, will give us our right signal. Okay. And uh, that, as I said, that's a negative, that's an active low signal. Okay. And um, all right. So I think that's it for this. It's kind of, it's pretty straightforward. I said, um, we're not only looking at our, you know, we're really not only just talking about looking at our registers and, and our memory, we're really uh, kind of looking at, 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 the, uh, at our address line wire up, right? So I use the tunnels uh, pretty much for all of our bus wiring. So we don't really, we don't really have, uh, you know, bus lines running around in our digital design uh, because these uh, tunnels are used to create those. Okay, so I think that's all we really wanted to cover today. It's gonna to be a short video, but I think uh, we're getting really close to being able to uh, turn this computer on and boot it up and run some code. Uh, I might not, might not look like it yet, but we're getting pretty close. So I think what we'll do in our next video is kind of tie this, bring this all together. We're going to zoom out and we're going to look at the uh, the rest of the high level design elements because uh, there are some there are some uh, some digital work that we did to to uh, complete our bus designs. We'll look at that. Uh, we'll also look at in the the, the bigger picture how all of these how all the elements uh, come together and are tied together in, in the final design. 
And I will also introduce our first device that we have set up um, you know, for TTL Computer 2. So we'll look at all that stuff in our next video, bring, it, bring our design all together in our next video. And then the video following that, we're gonna turn, we're gonna turn the computer on and we're gonna boot it up and uh, run our first program. So getting close to something ex more exciting, stick with it, stick with me. And uh, until next time, that's it. Thanks for watching.